welcome. It is my greatest pleasure to welcome you along to our luxury taste testing experience. Now, I don't want to take too much time talking through what we'll be experiencing today and what we'll be tasting, because I can imagine you're just as eager and as hungry as I am. So it's difficult for me to call this a job being paid to share some of the most delicious and decadent meals and treats you can find anywhere on the planet, actually. Now, of course, I would say that, but if you have a, a soft spot for cured meats, delicious creamy cheeses and some of the finest chocolate you will find anywhere then you're at the right experience now quite often I'll hear but I don't like cheese our cheese is like nothing you have ever tasted I promise you that now again I don't want to take too long with the formalities. Let's get down to the taste testing. And we have so much in store for you from our cave aged Telazio cheese to our Spanish Serrano ham. We will start off with the savories and then move on to the sweet. Okay? Let's get started. In front of you, you will find a board, just like this, and you don't have to follow my guide with this, but I think it's a, an enriching experience to go around the board together. Now. In your side here, we have the Spanish Serrano ham. And when we actually come to sample each, I will elaborate a bit more on each of the pieces. This is a prosciutto ham, Italian, mild, beautiful, beautiful taste. Here we have the typical and traditional mature cheddar. The corner we have an apricot Wensleydale and no Wensleydale would be complete without the cranberry equivalent. And we'll talk through the makeup of the board and the reasons why we have such specific items. Nothing on this plate is by accident. Everything complements and everything flows in a very specific order. Each complementing the last. Moving on, we have the applewood. The applewood is one of my personal favorites. It can be done badly by some of the cheese houses. We do it right. In the center, we have the two pieces of the Telazio. I'm very excited to get to that. And here we have the red Leicester. Very tangy, very full flavored cheese. Now, I'll just get you a glass of water and we'll get started. Well, no, I've been here for 11, 12 years, I think. Here you are. Cold without being ice cold. Now, I would encourage you to drink before every sampling and just cleanse the palate, okay? Now, you 
find a fork do not feel pressured to use the fork but for the sake of appearances you can understand why I will now my recommendation would be to start with the Red Leicester very traditional cylindrical cheese and we start with the red Leicester because it has a tang to it but it's one of the more subtle cheeses it does have almost that bite to it, but it actually sets the palate up perfectly to move into our Serrano ham. Now the Serrano ham, ours is really quite special. It, it's very easy to go wrong with Serrano. Our ham is aged for at least 12 months in the Catalonian mountains. Now what to look for in a really perfect ham? It should have a sheen to it, like this does. If you see it's curling up at the edges a little bit, it's probably been left out for too long and it's dry and it's lost that strength. Serrano has a depth, a saltiness, and a rich, full-bodied taste. I've had people ask why we don't start with the milder prosciutto. The reason for that is because the prosciutto actually complements the flavor of the Serrano. Now, this is the only example where I would encourage you not to take a drink, okay? From the Serrano to the prosciutto. It's entirely up to yourself, but trust me on this one. I very nearly dropped my board, which would be the one word that encapsulates prosciutto ham so completely you can still have the, the lingering taste of the serrano we almost layer in the prosciutto over the top mm. it makes for a, a taste sensation let me grab a drink of water only a recommendation that you do the same don't have to okay now next we can navigate our way to the mature cheddar now again the mature cheddar following on from the prosciutto ham Follow the Serrano. Well, let's try it. Immediately, you're hit with a, a tang and a zest. See, cheese 
such a broad spectrum of flavors. Many people don't know how the process of creating cheese, what that looks like. Essentially, about um, five kilos of milk, roughly 10 pounds, equates to about half a kilo of cheese or a pound of cheese. And the process, let me grab some water. The process I'm going to try another piece of the mature. Mm. Depending on the kind of cheese, the milk is usually heated. It's called a pasteurization. And this is to try and kill off and remove any bacteria from the milk. Now, traditional cheeses artisan cheeses in some cases skip this step entirely which of course means that the facility and the environment the cheese is being created and processed must be exceptionally clean but cheese is pasteurized known as homogenization once this is done the cheese will then be coagulated before we go into the details of coagulation and curd separation I'd like to introduce you to my friend my friend Mr. Wensleydale now Wensleydale is known as a crumbly kind of cheese apricot Wensleydale offers a different slant to a classical cheese. The apricot absorbs a little bit of that moisture that you usually find in a Wensleydale. And it gives a beautiful marbling effect. And when tasted. Mm, offers an entirely unique experience. The Wensleydale is almost unrecognizable, but with traces of it. Beautiful cheese. Now, while I sample another piece of this decadent, decadent marbling, we were at coagulation. Coagulation is where an enzyme known as rennet, our friend rennet, is added to the cheese. And again, the cheese slash mixture is heated up a little bit. Rennet is introduced and the mixture that's now quite a borderline solid is moved on to the next phase um, it's called salting now when we salt cheese there are a few reasons we do this primarily for flavor but salt also acts as a bacteria inhibitor so it keeps the cheese clean and with that in mind I think we should move on to the crumbly cranberry Wensleydale. Just in this corner here. Be very careful about how I lift this because, as you can see, it crumbles very easily. It's very soft. It's almost malleable. And unless I had told you it's almost impossible to relate the cranberry to the apricot 
Now the base cheese is the exact same. It's an example of how the slightest introduction of something new, how it can alter the entire complexion of the cheese. Mm. Again, I encourage you to drink water between each. Sometimes I like to carry that reminiscence of former cheese, but that's my preference. It doesn't have to be yours. Okay, now where were we? Salting. Once the cheese has been salted, it's then pressed. Now, depending on the kind of cheese you're aiming for, when you're pressing cheese, you're pressing the way away from the cheese. That's why cheeses are generally these very long cylindric shapes, because presses are almost always cylinder. And again, depending on the kind of cheese you're aiming for, determines the press and the pressure applied to the cheese. Okay, and there's one final stage. But before that, I think we should step into the middle and sample our apple wood. Mm. Now the apple would only to have two, at least two cubes of that. The apple wood maintains and introduces itself with a, a flurry of tang, almost a citrusy. such a full-bodied flavor. The cheese itself is soft, yet almost malleable, but the flavor is so hard-hitting. That's why we leave it to the second last. But I need to... a bit more. No, I am biased. But the apple wood It's got so much character and so much flavor. I defy anybody not to enjoy this. Now our approach to Applewood, it's smoked, but not heavily. And that flavor just goes on and on. Mm. Have a touch of water. Okay. Now, this little dance leads us to our cave aged. Now this is it has a scent, but it's not unpleasant. It's not one of these cheeses that if you had it in the kitchen, people who don't like cheese, they wouldn't recoil in horror. At least not the cheese that we make. Now it has a surprisingly mild and soft flavor. Very, very creamy. It almost has a, a nut-like undertone to it. Hmm. It's a magnificent cheese. And it knocks everything else in terms of a, a flavor profile out of the water. Well, it might not have the character of the apple wood. It certainly has a, a layered effect. 
every second is almost like a new flavor. Remarkable cheese. Now, which was your favorite? <laughs> Feel free to try anything else. I'm going to sample another Wensleydale cube. Surprisingly, cleanses the palate of the Telagio very quickly and replaces it with that almost that kind of sunny cranberry flavor. How can something taste like taste sunny? It's light, it's airy, but it has a warmth to it. Connotations of sunny. And I couldn't not finish off the hams. Beautiful. Absolutely. Perfect. In every sense of the word. And the Soft, mild, but perfectly complimentary. Okay. I know what you're thinking. I forgot the final stages of the cheese creation process. Never. Once the cheese has been pressed, it's then aged. And aging of cheese can range from as little as eight weeks to years. And there are three very important factors when aging cheese. The duration, primarily. Humidity and temperature. Each of these factors plays an enormous part in shaping the flavor profile, how it looks, how long it can last, and of course, its appearance. I didn't really say that twice, but the, the aging process with cheese is still, still a work in progress. People are still dreaming up new flavors, new approaches. Mm. Most of our cheese is aged for usually at least a year. We have some cheeses that have been aged for considerably longer. And of course, the longer something takes to age, the more expensive it is. Of course, everything we sample today is included in the price. That's Grab a quick drink. All right. How are we feeling? Do we have room for dessert? That's the question, question, question. Of course we do. Okay. Let me introduce you to our dessert. As you will know, this is a chocolate palette. I can smell the chocolate from here. Okay, and I will talk you through the trip. My handy little pointer. Raffaello, 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 Raffaello. These are a white chocolate ball comprising of white Californian almonds. The almond isn't overly prolific, but it's definitely 
noticeable. It's encased in a very creamy white chocolate, dusted off with Pacific Island coconut. You can smell it from here. It's absolutely beautiful. I think I'm going to have one right now. We will savor ourselves. Stepping around, here we have the 90% linden dark chocolate. Now, 90% is a reflection of the cacao content. And I would advise when we do start to start with the 90% because it's very easy to mask and it isn't something that interacts well. If you have a, a flavor profile in the mouth, introduce the strictly dark chocolate. It doesn't give a true reflection of what it tastes like. Most, including the cheeses, most of the chocolates can carry their own weight. There's a subtlety that's quite surprising in the 90% cacao that you wouldn't expect. But however, is nonetheless very true. Stepping around again, here we have the chili linden dark chocolate. Now, some people aren't overly fond of a dark chocolate. The chili infusion changes the overall flavor, the creaminess and the texture almost entirely. The dark chocolate is almost lost inside the chili, but it isn't a spicy offering. I'm quite excited for you to get to that. Stepping around again, here we have our traditional milk chocolate by Dark and Green. Very, very well made. 37% cacao. Creamy, rich without being too ostentatious, and I like that word, and I use it every opportunity I get. Moving on finally to my personal favorite, and again I recommend sipping this till last. It's our milk chocolate with cookies and cream. Now, our chocolatiers did something very, very special with our entire offering, but the center portion how they have recreated that biscuity without losing the marble chocolate flavor, I have no idea, but I think you're going to like it. Okay, let's start with the chocolate ball. many flavors to even talk through. It's quite a remarkable little treat. You're immediately hit by the coconut, I think. Very quickly chased by the white chocolate. When I mean chased, I mean it chases it out of the picture. You lose the coconut only temporarily. The hazelnut presents itself, mingles with the white chocolate, and then you have this creamy overall profile. But the bow that wraps up this creamy melding is the coconut. It reappears and finishes and sends off that failure perfectly. And if I pronounce that word different every time I've said it, what can we do? I'm tempted to have one more, but I think we'll come back to it. We don't want to completely flood the senses. Now I did say we should start with a 90% linden. The reason we went with the Raphaelio it's because I can't help myself, and I have very little self-control. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. 
the coconut actually serves as a, a very very gentle base for the dark chocolate to sit on top of you'll see what i mean i want to take one of the squares The ninety percent cacao at first offers a very brash, a very bold, a very enriching flavor. Too much. It feels almost like too much. This is actually dampened somewhat by the coconut. But after four or five seconds, you'll have seen me indicate. And what this was representing was the flavor and the taste invert. Suddenly that, that brash, bold, almost too rich flavor completely inverts. And it becomes creamy, accessible, and delicious. It's a beautiful piece of chocolate. It's a beautiful chocolate bar. But it does take just a few seconds to, to react. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now we will step around again to the dark chili. I would suggest you have a drink of water. difference. It's really quite stark. And there's a tiny tickle at the back of the throat from the chili. It doesn't feel spicy. Just a little bit of heat. But the first three or four seconds again are actually very sweet and almost have a milky profile to it. And then the chili almost wakes up and says, here I am, enjoy me. It's definitely one of our most iconic chocolates, but in a similar vein to the 90% cacao, it, it inverts itself. The flavor just changes entirely. Remarkable, really. Now, I suggest you have a quick drink of water. And we introduce ourselves. Absolute comfort. I think it's the easiest of our offerings. And what I mean easy, what I mean is not that it weighs less. <laughs> I mean it's a very welcoming, warm, creamy, and it's almost an invitational chocolate. Appreciate that might sound a little too aloof, 
but mm, it's just so tasty it's just such a beautiful and creamy chocolate will definitely come back but now again I encourage you to take a quick sip because what we have next is just unlike anything you've ever tasted and I think I'll show you this in a little bit more detail the cross section again how they've crammed in so many cookies here I am unsure there's a white dark speckling flavor and it's beautiful it's magnificent it really is the crown sitting atop a very prestigious or rather it's the crown jewel in a very prestigious crown of chocolates it's beautiful have a very quick drink of water <clears throat> I would invite you again to revisit the Raffaello <clears throat> while everything on our platter is premium, is luxurious, and is of the highest quality. I do think that these crumbly white Californian almond, Pacific Ocean coconut curry. juices so many flavors and I think it actually this could be my new favorite no I love our double chocolate cookies and cream I love it but the Raffaello just has this spectrum of flavor and again the way the coconut reintroduces itself at the end it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Mm. A bit of coconut there. If I've had any food in my beard or my teeth, I would have preferred if you told me, but you're forgiven. Now, how was that? You can still taste the coconut, yeah. Okay, of the meat and cheeses platter, what were the favorite or favorites? Mm -hmm. 
I agree. I think that there is a lot to be said, clearly, about each of the servings, but that especially was beautiful. And from our sweet offering, what about that tray interested you specifically? Oh, really? Everybody has a very different answer. There's usually a lot of correlation between person to person in the first tray, in the, the savory. But the confectionery, we always have these huge, very wide disparities. Seemingly no no favorite, no one clear winner, just a lot of very high averages, people supporting such a vast, everything scores very, very evenly actually. Obviously I have this, this final say, so up until today it had been the cookies and cream, that had been our flagship. I'm kidding. Now, I appreciate you're eager to come back. We change up our platters once every two months. We obviously deal with suppliers direct. A lot of the cheeses we, we create and make ourselves. The hams we source in specially. Absolutely. All of our animals are treated like kings and queens and non-binary champions. And it's, uh, I'm very proud to be working for the business. I love the joy that our little food samplings bring people. And we're sampling some of the finest food in the entire world, as I said. It's a beautiful thing, and it brings me a lot of joy. And I said I've been here for, I think, 11, 12 years, and uh, it was founded. I think nine years prior to that, just over 20 years, it's been open. They started off just with cheese, kind of making it, and serving it. And then they, they looked into sourcing some of the, the cured and the dried ham. And then, well, the confectionery was a, a natural progression, I suppose. Absolutely. It's... I obviously have to work out because no, we, we only do the tasting sessions for me. We do two a week. They're obviously entirely exclusive and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we, we do actually sell externally as well. We just do these tours and these tasting sessions as a, a kind of one-on-one -on -one personal tasting sessions. It's something that I've always loved. So for us to offer it, it's just, it's amazing. Of course. Of course. I'm <laughs> it's my pleasure to meet you. Truly. Well, we certainly would love to see you again. And if you, as, as you're walking out, just pop past our reception desk. We'll send you up to our mailing list, and you'll be the first to know when we change up and revise our current servings. Do you have anything in particular you would like us to incorporate? Parma? Okay. We've had Parma as a rotation quite a few times. It's, um, it's similar to Serrano, but there's a depth to it, I think. Of course. Again, it's my pleasure. I wish you good night. And I'll see you very, very soon.